On this episode of John Marucci on the Road, we'll cover a hidden leak we discovered in my RPOD 179's cargo area and the steps we had to take in response. As a reminder, this channel is committed to showing you not only the good, but also the occasional difficulties you may encounter as an RV owner. We do this so you can count the cost and make better decisions about RV ownership. Hey everybody, this is John Marucci. I made the jump to traveling with my RV back in 2016 and have never looked back. I've had my share of problems along the way, and this channel attempts to be what I wish I had when I started out. So here's a bit of background. Before the first trip of the season, we went to the storage complex where the RPOD 179 was stored to do a quick inspection of the trailer. This is normal practice before bringing the trailer home to dewinterize it and prep it for first use. We wanted to make sure there were no issues with the trailer before getting it out for the first time of the season. Here I am walking around the trailer doing the inspection. We did notice right off that some animal, likely a raccoon, had chewed off part of the TV antenna cable TV outlet cover, as well as part of the sewer cap cover. So right away, there were issues we would have to deal with. Generally, the exterior of the R-Pod looked pretty good for enduring another Michigan winter. Unfortunately, things turned south quickly when I opened the cargo door. With my headlight on, I noticed some of the vinyl floor in the front middle of the cargo hold had a pucker in it. This was not a good sign, as we hadn't ever noticed this issue and possibly meant that there had been water intrusion. Next, we went inside the trailer and didn't see signs of interior water leaks near the cargo area. Everything was dry and looked as it should. So we decided to remove the plywood bed support that covers the cargo area to get a better look. There are four screws to remove to get a closer look at the cargo area. After sliding the plywood away, we could see the floor issue much better. We did a thorough inspection for any water leaks in the cargo area and especially around the hot water tank. It is good to remember at this point that the hot water tank was empty from winterizing the trailer last fall and only RV antifreeze was in the plumbing lines. Besides a few small drops of RV antifreeze, there really wasn't anything to see in terms of leaks. To try and diagnose the issue better, we next remove the cargo divider. This is a flimsy piece of board that is easily removed. After removing the four screws, it was a simple matter of placing the divider out of the way to get a better look at the floor. Next, I started pulling the floor up at the front of the trailer in the cargo area. First thing to note is that the staples on the first section by the water pump were already stripped and the floor was basically sitting, not stapled, in that area. This was a bit of a mystery. It appeared that the floor had already been cut in this area, and this would have had to happen before I took delivery of the trailer back in April of 2017. Unfortunately, as I peeled back the floor, there were obvious signs of water intrusion. This was a very disappointing discovery. Using a headlight, I determined that not all of the floor was stained from the water, and there was about a six inch wide strip of wood stained near the wall. We simply couldn't see the extent of the damage with the vinyl floor still attached. At this point, we had to decide to cut the vinyl floor completely out, which meant a much bigger job than I was expecting. If we removed it, this would mean a full replacement of the vinyl and a bunch of time I wasn't planning to spend to get the trailer ready. Yet the subfloor, where it was stained from water intrusion, was not wet, just stained. So it was difficult to determine when the intrusion had happened or where it was coming from. We did a more thorough look around for signs of water intrusion and were again drawn to the fact that someone had cut the floor in the cargo area at some point. Another interesting clue was that the staples along the floor were not rusted. So apparently someone at the factory or dealership sliced the floor, yet water did not sit near the wall and stain the staples. The next thing we did was to pull the water pump out so we could pull the floor up in the utility area. Interestingly, the subfloor, while stained, wasn't soft at all. 
Unfortunately, things got worse as we decided to cut the vinyl floor out of the cargo area. First up was to cut the front corner to free the vinyl floor from the subfloor. At this point, we were hoping to save the existing vinyl floor. However, as you can see, it went from bad to worse as we started peeling back the vinyl floor at the cargo door. This was a low point as we discovered the extent of the damage and noticed just how dirty the subfloor was. Also, looking at the back of the vinyl flooring, it became obvious that we would have to remove all the cargo area flooring. All of a sudden, the weight of the problem became apparent. Next, we need to remove the other half of the bed support, plywood, to see into the remainder of the cargo area. This was simple to do by removing a few screws. With the plywood removed, we cut the rest of the vinyl flooring along the base of the cargo door. This gave us the ability to pull the flooring back all the way to see the extent of the damage. This quickly became even more discouraging as the water damage extended even farther toward the interior and front of the trailer. We cut the rest of the flooring away at the cargo door and noticed the water stains were even more pervasive. What was interesting at this point was that as we looked toward the interior of the cab, the subfloor hadn't been fully affected. Only the 8 to 10 inch area from the door was stained by water. At this point we had no idea how the water was getting into the cargo area or how long this had been going on, but all clues pointed to the cargo door or somewhere near it. Next, we need to see the full extent of the damage so we removed the divider between the cargo area and the plumbing lines at the wet bath side of the trailer. This would allow us to pull up the vinyl flooring fully to see things better. We cut the floor the rest of the way and looked more carefully. After doing so, we once again noticed that the floor was dry and unstained as you peered in toward the cabin. The stain pattern was strongly pointing to a leak at the cargo door area. We also removed the flooring fully from around the water pump at the hot water tank to see fully under it. The utility side of the floor was much less affected by the leak with a 4 inch swath of stain with either side of it unaffected. From this pan shot, you can see the extent of the damage to the subfloor. This close up shot from outside of the cargo door really shows the damaged subfloor area well. The stained area itself was not wet, but seemed almost sticky to the touch in places. Also, very importantly, the floor was not soft. Obviously, the existing vinyl floor was a total loss and would need to be replaced. Here are a few shots that show the extent of the damage with the vinyl flooring rolled up. I have to say, at this point in the process, I was frustrated and discouraged. If anyone watching has seen some of my other videos on the issues I've had with the R-Pods floors, you'll know that this surprise was not a welcome one. It was one of many issues I've had to deal with over the years, even though the trailer has been regularly maintained. Here's my commentary taped at the time we discovered the issue. Okay, so we came to check out the R-Pod after it's been in storage for a while, and there's a little bubbling in the cargo area under the floor and dug into it. Unfortunately, we have a water leak at some point. Not sure if it's even this winter or prior because it, it looks pretty established. But generally, there's a big stain on the floor. We actually cut the vinyl floor back uh, all the way in the baggage area and all the way along, along the front of the uh, travel trailer and then along the back here. And there's a pattern of water that's coming by the uh, door here that gets into the cargo area and then it looks like a small uh, stain going across the front of the trailer. So if the trailer's like leaned down a little bit, maybe water just ran there. So we gotta do further investigation, but right now it doesn't look good. Um, this portion of the floor is very badly stained. Uh, we have to figure out what to do next. And the vinyl is obviously gonna have to be cut up and thrown away because it's just a nasty mess there back here. So uh, it's what happens sometimes, travel trailers, four years old, been in storage for four and a half months, five months now. and. Uh, just discovered this, so we're gonna to to take the next steps. After this, we decided to bring the trailer home and run a fan on the floor to try and dry it out overnight before we did anything else. 
After leaving the fan on overnight to dry out the subfloor, it was time to continue with troubleshooting the issue. Here I am explaining the process. Okay, so we're going to continue with resolving the floor problem where we have a water issue at the opening of the cargo door. So we left fans on all night and a good part of the day today to try and dry it out. Now we're going to cut the vinyl floor out because it's really bad and then vacuum the stuff here that's the the stuff that's here in the in the belly and then do some water testing so those are the steps we're going to take next so let's jump into it so first thing is we're going to go ahead and cut the vinyl floor out of the cargo area we had already cut the vinyl floor at the cargo door now we needed to cut the flooring along the bed support and along the wall to remove it fully if you ever have to do something like this make sure you use a fresh blade on your cutting tool cut slowly and try to keep the entire piece of vinyl floor intact. You can use the old flooring as a template to double check the measurements on the new piece to be installed later. Also notice that when I am cutting the floor and do not have a wall to cut against, I am using a small level as a hard edge as I am cutting along a visual seam in the flooring. This is done in order to keep a straight edge on all the cuts. Once I finished the cutting, it was a simple matter of rolling up the floor to remove it. You want to be careful when rolling it up as it can split easily. Here I am talking through what things look like with the flooring fully removed. There it is. It's interesting here. You notice the stain. This is actually dry. All this is dry. This is where the stain is. You can come over here too and see this stain starts here but this board's dry that's kind of good news because apparently it didn't it didn't seep too much into the cabin and under here even we can look a little bit but there's a lot of stuff here including pieces of the vinyl getting stuck to the floor next up we took a shop back to the cargo area to clean up any debris from the subfloor and as you can see much of the stained floor is near the cargo door and front corner of the unit Okay, so we've cleaned out the cabin and you can kind of see where the water stain was and some of the stainage. And it's it's fairly dry even now, but you know, there is no sponginess at all on the floors, so that's good. There's really nothing going on as far as softness or things falling apart. That's good. So it apparently got caught quick enough that it wasn't an issue, you know. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a water test. We're going to shut this up. Spray water on the outside, we will film on the inside to see if any leaks are coming in. Obviously, it's coming in somewhere. And then after the water test, once we figure out where it's coming in and stop that, we'll go ahead and use a bleach solution, really light bleach, to clean this all up. And then uh, think about plans as far as what we're going to use to cover it again. But I think we're going pretty good right now. Looks not bad even. The nice thing I'm very happy about is you notice the stainage only ends here. And we'll show a picture also of the vinyl upside down so you can see where it happened, but it didn't intrude all the way into the cabin, which is good, so it's kind of isolated. All right. The back of the vinyl floor tells the same story of where the water was entering the cabin. By examining the back of the vinyl floor piece, it is easy to see the pattern of intrusion. This helped us to know where to focus our efforts in terms of troubleshooting. The darkest and most troubling section of the floor was at the front corner. Next up, we needed to examine the seals on the cargo bay door. Okay, before we do the water test, I'm just going to show you the seals on the compartment door. It actually, it actually looks really good, um, and it looked good before we put it in the storage. So it's really hard to tell like where the leak's coming from because all the way around this uh, compartment door, it just is sealed well. So it's kind of a mystery, and that's why we're going to actually shoot water on it and see what's going on with it. So, okay. The water test is an important step in determining if the cargo bay door is leaking. Here we are spraying a steady stream of water right at the door for several minutes. This would simulate a very heavy and steady downpour that would not be normal. After several minutes of intense water testing, we didn't see signs of leaking at the door. This was a mystery as my assumption was that the cargo door was leaking. We continued to deluge the door with water for a while longer and did eventually begin to see a small amount of water materialize at the door locks. And here's my explanation at the time. 
Okay, so we've been doing our water test and spraying the door, and you can see a pool of water here at this um, lock. And also, there's water all in this gap here, and it came down here. And also on the other side, you can see it pulling here too. So, uh, as expected, the uh, door was leaking in some way, and now we're starting to see it. So apparently, if you get enough water in there, a really long drenching rain or on the off-season snow melt for a long period of time, it's going to get down into that and pull up, get above the seal somehow, and then, you know, start seeping in the cabin. And you can see that we stopped after about five minutes or so spraying it. That would actually get a lot worse over time if it just kept doing it. So that makes sense from a forensic perspective. So we have to figure out how to get that fixed so it's not coming in. The next step we took was to use bleach in a spray bottle to clean up the floor and remove the stain. We sprayed the bleach onto the stained areas and then scrubbed the areas more thoroughly to see if we could remove the stains from the subfloor. If you ever try this, make sure you keep the cargo door open and run the trailer's exhaust fan to keep the area well ventilated. We let the bleach spray sit on the stained areas of the floor for a while. The bleach really did the trick and removed almost all the stain as you can see from this shot. This was good news, as the subfloor was solid and the stains were coming out well after using the bleach. Now that the subfloor was cleaned up, we needed to begin preparing the cargo area for the new flooring. First would be to cut out any of the old flooring and materials that remained after our initial work. Especially important was the area under the front wall of the trailer as we would be inserting new flooring under the lip of the wall in this area. As a tip, the old staples were not coming out easily without chewing up the subfloor, so we decided to seat the staples flat in the existing subfloor using a large bolt I dug up as a makeshift awl. A quick note, at this point we plan to reinforce the cargo door with a layer of weather stripping as we were somewhat confident that the door was the leak issue. You'll want to stick around to find out what happened that changed our minds later in the process about the source of the leak. Yet at this point in the process, we started working toward finding replacement for the flooring. First thing was to measure the area very carefully at different points and scribe the measurements out on a diagram of the floor space. Unfortunately, not all the measurements were perfectly square due to the initial build of the trailer. Once we had the general size of the cargo area, it was off to Home Depot to purchase a quality piece of vinyl flooring. We decided to upgrade the quality of the floor material as the vinyl that we removed was very thin. Here you can see me using blue painter's tape and measuring out the cuts for the new vinyl flooring. I can't emphasize enough how important it is to measure a few times and record those measurements on a visual diagram. The benefit of the painter's tape is that it is easy to adjust to your exact measurements. You can also use the old vinyl flooring to confirm your measurements. But generally, you'll want to take new measurements that fully fit the space with just a bit of buffer. While you could just trace the outline of the old vinyl flooring onto the new, likely the cut of the old may be shorter than you will need. Next, we remove the front trim piece using an automotive plastic trim tool. This trim piece is very flimsy, so be careful with it. There are very small nails that hold this trim in place, and it is easy to break the trim. Many of the small nails didn't pull out with the trim, so we decided to seat these nails with a small awl and put new nails in the trim. With the trim removed and nails reseated, it was on to cutting the new vinyl flooring. Here's a shot of the new vinyl floor with the painter's tape marked out where you can see the cut marks. You can see the outline of the cargo area fairly easily. To cut the flooring, we used a brand new razor blade in the cutting tool and a metal carpenter square to serve as a straight edge. Notice that I'm kneeling on the carpenter square to keep it from moving. It is essential that you use some sort of straight edge guide that will remain steady when cutting. It is very easy for any straight edge to slip when you're cutting, so being able to kneel on the straight edge, like this carpenter square, 
help keep it planted. Remember to cut slowly, applying steady pressure to cut all the way through the material. I also did this on an old plastic tarp on my garage floor so I wouldn't cut into anything important. By watching this short clip, you can see that when I cut, I lined up the carpenter square to the edge of the blue painter's tape. This gave me at least two marks to lay the carpenter square against as a cut guide. Try to keep weight on the carpenter square or straight edge and move slowly when cutting. When done, you should have one piece of new vinyl that is tailor-made for the cargo area. Fitting the newly cut piece of vinyl into the cargo area proved to be a time-consuming task in the odd and short space of the cargo area. We made sure to measure just a bit long so there was extra length of new flooring in a few areas. While this is a much better problem to have versus cutting the material too short, it still proved a bit difficult to deal with in the odd shaped area. The initial fit was close, but some obvious trimming would be required. Giving the large L shape to the vinyl floor and us not wanting to cut the piece in multiple sections, it wasn't the easiest job to place the new piece correctly. Part of the issue with fitting the new vinyl is to first slide the piece under the front wall. This is something that we accounted for when measuring the piece. So the piece was slightly wider than would easily fit. As can be seen from this clip, I needed to first feed the flooring under the wall to determine if it needed to be trimmed further. The front corner proved to be a problem in this regard, as did the very small gap between the wall and subfloor under the cargo door. So the piece was removed and trimmed ever so slightly taking about 3 eighths of an inch off along the front wall area. Again, I'm kneeling on a carpenter square to make the cuts. We also needed to remove about 3 eighths inch along the inner wall corner as we were too wide from that wall to the cargo door. After unrolling the trim piece in the cargo area, we tucked in the new flooring under the walls and took a look. The fit was better but we still had an issue in the corner and along the cargo door. This time, we needed to trim another eighth of an inch off from the cargo door area at the wall corner, mainly because the interior wood framing was not quite square. We did this very slowly by hand with a set of excellent scissors. This piece would insert under the wall at the cargo door, so any cut that was not perfectly straight would be hidden. As you will see from this next shot, it wasn't easy to reinsert the piece where it needed to be. It took a few minutes to get the piece where we wanted it. Once we were happy with the fit, it was time to staple the floor at the front of the cargo area and in the utility area. These staples would be hidden underneath the trim piece or be in the enclosed utility area. The staples would hold the new vinyl flooring in place. After the floor was fitted and stapled, it was time to use silicone caulk to connect the spliced seams we created when cutting the old vinyl flooring from the utility area. Since this was in the utility area, near the water pump and several plumbing lines, we used waterproof silicone caulk. Here's a shot of the caulk being applied to the seams. We then used the same silicone caulk and applied it to the seam under the cargo door and the seam along the inner wall of the cargo area. Here's a good close-up shot of some of the work at this point in the project. You'll notice the caulk looks good and the floor is really a solid upgrade compared to what we had in the cargo area before. Next, it was time to reinstall the partitions within the cargo area and reattach the water pump to the floor. After this, we need to reinstall the very thin trim piece to the front cargo wall. If you recall, we seated the existing nails, so we needed to replace the nails. 
An easy way to work with these very small nails is to set the trim piece on a hard surface and preset the nails into the trim. As you can see from this shot, I had the trim sitting on top of the bed frame and putting each new nail one at a time. A good tip for attaching small trim like this is to use a ruler on the floor to give the trim the proper distance off the ground. Here we need to set the trim about an eighth inch above the flooring and my metal yardstick worked perfectly to do the job. I used a very small hammer to seat the nails, tapping lightly, then came back with a small awl to seat them fully. Here's a close-up shot of the finished product with the trim installed. Now on to fixing what we thought was the cause of the problem. After installing the floor, we decided to tackle adding additional weather stripping to the cargo door to ensure that water would not enter through the door. The product we used was MD brand self-adhesive extra small rubber window seal that fits gaps of 1 16th to 1 8th of an inch. We purchased this at Home Depot. This specific product fit perfectly onto the space on the metal cargo door frame and was very easy to install. The only difficult part of installing the product is that you need to go slowly and to be careful when applying the material around the curves of the frame. You want to go back and press it on more firmly after applying the material. As you can see from this shot, the material shows up on the inside of the door and provides some extra barrier to water entering at the door edges. After applying the window seal, we then applied a bead of silicone caulk to the inside of the seal material. This completed the work to strengthen the door seal. Unfortunately, this wasn't the end of the story. I was having difficulty reconciling that the door had allowed that much water to enter the cabin given our earlier testing. Yet at this point in the process, it was difficult to see any other place where water was coming in. Then just before we were about to call the job complete, I did a quick inspection of the caulk on the outside of the trailer near the door. Everything looked fine until I pressed on the fiberglass at the front caulk near the bottom of the trailer. The fiberglass was depressing under the trim and was loose from the caulk. If I hadn't actually depressed the fiberglass panel, I wouldn't have seen the issue. So we stripped the existing caulk on the front lower side of the fiberglass along the trim rail and reapplied new caulk to create a barrier to water entry. It is quite possible that this area and not the cargo door was the main culprit in terms of water entering the cargo area. This would also align to the pattern of water stains on the floor. The good news is that the trailer has now been fixed for many weeks, has been used for camping, and has endured several heavy periods of rain without water issues in the cargo area. Hopefully the details of the process we went through can help in several ways. First. Make sure you do a regular thorough inspection of your trailer including flooring and seams. Don't forget to inspect the flooring in the cargo area. Look especially for discoloration and any other irregularities in the flooring. If you do find issues, remember that first impressions can be deceiving. Remember also that most issues, even water leak problems, can be fixed. If you do decide to fix something like this yourself, there are many people online who have gone before you and can be of assistance. If you do not feel comfortable to tackle a fix like this, contact your local RV service center or dealer. I'd like to hear from those of you who have personally tackled RV leak issues. Please leave a comment with any other tips you would give to someone who is thinking about tackling such an issue. As always, thanks for watching. If you did get something out of this video, we would greatly appreciate it if you would take a moment and hit the like button before you exit. We'd love for you to join the On The Road team by subscribing to the channel. If you want to dive deeper, we have great RV travel resources, podcasts, and blogs on johnmarucci.com. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. This is John Marucci and so long for now.